Okay, so today I'm going to discuss on this, uh, which is uh, in our previous session. Basically, we just uh, discuss on few equations related to transformer, and then we can use that equations uh, as you can go through to our past our past slides. Huh? In the past slides which is the ideal transformer, we have uh, some equations that relates the voltage to the turns ratio and then also the current to the turns ratio. And then uh, we have also discussed on the relationship of input power to the output power. Okay, then uh, lastly, we have also uh, see uh, some of this uh, discuss on this uh, equation that is related to impedances all right so how we can represent the impedances uh, for example if we have the load impedance as zl so we can also represent the z prime which is the impedance f that we see from the generator side so we can use we can apply all of these equations to uh, this example 2.1. So basically, when we when this example 2.1 is basically uh, a good example for us to understand how we can uh, mark, how we can apply all of those uh, equations in calculate in calculate calculation of the values of the transform which is uh, the electrical values in terms of uh, impedance, uh, transmission lines, current, okay, load voltage, and so on. So in this example, as you can see, uh, let me just uh, read, it, read it again. A generator rated 480 volt, okay, this is the generator, which is rated at 480 volt. It is connected to a uh, through it is connected a transmission lines with an impedance of the transmission lines of uh, 0 0.18 ohms J 0 0.24. This is the impedance of the transmission line. So the generator generate electricity that is passed through this imp impedance of the transmission lines, which is over long distance of the uh, transfer of energy or power from the generator to the transmission lines to the load okay so at the right hand side here is the load area so this is the generator area the generator basically uh, if we have a look at this uh, figure in our previous slides so we have the generator at the power plant eh? power plant we have uh, for example uh, coal combustion generator or gas combustion so from the generator we generate electricity and step up the voltage and transfer it through uh, transmission lines and then step down the voltage again to uh, distribute it meaning that to be used by the loads at the receiving end so for this case as you can see in this uh, example so we have the generator and the transmission lines and then the load so in example uh, in the figure a here as you can see there is no uh, there are no uh, transformers used in this figure meaning that for this system this is the system without transformer okay so the bottom one is a system with transformer which is in real world what we can see is some things like the bottom one, which is we have generator, transformer, and then transmission lines, and then uh, step down uh, transformer, and then the loads. All right. So for for this uh, example two point one, firstly we we are going to find the 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 load voltage. Okay, the load voltage of figure A which is the load voltage of the system without transformer okay so 
as you can read in this uh, question, for example, 2.1, the first question, uh, what will be the voltage at the load? Okay. And then, what, what is the transmission line losses? So, F, as we have already discussed in our previous session that if we don't use the transformer, we will uh, have a lot of losses eh, will occur because the main reason why we use transformer to transmit the power over long distance is to make sure that we can minimize uh, losses that might occur during transfer of the power. Right? So, in this question, I think uh, you can see at, at this uh, side by side, eh, which is uh, the lecture notes, the tutorial note that I've already uh, shared with all of you. So, this is the representation. I redraw this uh, figure to my uh, tutorial notes here. As you can see, we have at the generator side uh, voltage 480. Okay, and then no step up, uh, no step up. Then uh, the current will be flowing through these transmission lines, and then it will arrive the load, uh, which is represented by I load. So we have IG, I line, and I load. Okay, what we want to find is uh, V load. Okay, so V load for the system without transformer. So basically, uh, as you can follow in this uh, uh, notes, so basically we have uh, so we want to find the V load. Uh, we want to find the V load. So basically, we can use this expression which is v load equals to i line times z load so before we use this uh, we find the v load the first thing first what we do is to find the uh, i line eh? the current that pass through this transmission line which is i line here okay so so basically we just can uh, uh, directly uh, use this uh, equation V divided by impedances, total impedances. Okay, so uh, the denominator, which is this, is the total impedances. Uh, Z load plus uh, Z line, right? So Z load plus Z line is the total impedances. So V divided by total impedances. Then uh, we just substitute all of the values that we have here. 480 for voltage at the generator side divided by uh, the impedance total impedances which is uh, this one is the transmission lines impedances and this one is the load impedances so basically the denominator here uh, we can just uh, directly add which is 0 0.18 plus 4 okay for the resist resistive element, resistance part. And then for the X or inductive part, we can also add uh, all together J0.24 plus J3. So we have uh, 4.18 plus J3 to 3.24, which is the denominator. Okay. So as you can see here, so in this calculation, basically uh, we see that uh, the denominator here is in the polar form, right? I'm sorry, denominator here is in the rectangular form, okay? So I think you all remember about how to convert uh, from polar to rectangular form and uh, the other way around, from rectangular form to polar form. So that... I think uh, that's been teach. Uh, that one also has already been teach in your calculus or uh, in my previous uh, lecture, my previous uh, class also uh, related to mechanics also has been discussed about how to convert 
uh, from polar to a rectangular form. So, I am not going to explain about it further because uh, that one has already been covered in other session, in other course. So, I just uh, assume that you all know how to convert this denominator to polar form because uh, we have this in rectangular form, so we have to convert it to the polar form, which is uh, the same as the form of the numerator here, right? So we convert the bottom one. So we convert uh, the bottom one using this uh, conversion, okay? Using this, this method of the conversion, then uh, we get the denominator of which is Z is 5.29 angle 37.8 okay so we can use this uh, Z or impedance to uh, further calculate the I line right by using this equation then finally we get the I line which is 90.7 ampere at angle negative 37 right so so once once we got the i line we can use this i line to find the load voltage right so we substitute uh, this i line into v load equation which is uh, v load equals to i line z load and then we already know z load right z load is uh, As you can see, Z load is 4 plus J3, right? So, similarly for Z load, we have to convert it into polar form, right? So, we convert Z load to, into polar form. So, we have both sides, which is in the form of polar. Then, we can just uh, directly calculate this which is 90.7 times 5 we get 454 and then for the angle this is a uh, times angle meaning that uh, where is my notes so for the angle is if it is multiplication meaning that we have to add both angle theta 1 plus theta 2 for the division we, we what we do is we uh, subtract which is theta 1 minus theta 2 okay so in this case so in this case negative 37.8 minus uh, sorry times huh? negative 37.8 plus okay plus plus 36.9 okay so this angle plus that angle, which is we get negative 0 0.9 degree of angle. So V load, we have 454 angle negative 0 0.9. As you can see for this system without transformer, we have V load of 454. But at the transmission lines, at the, at the generation side here, the actual, the original V, the V that is at the generation side is actually much more higher, which is 480. So, meaning that there are some losses that occurs in these transmission lines, which as a result, as you can see, the load voltage is now dropped to 454, right? So, that is the something that is clear that shows us that if we don't use transformer, meaning that uh, some amount of voltage will be lost, right? So we are going to prove about that if we use, for example, in uh, if we use the uh, the system in, as in figure B here, we 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 prove that we show that uh, there will be very minimal loss, okay? Very minimal loss, which is if we generate four hundred and eighty volt and then at the receiving end at the loads we will see that the voltage received by the load is uh, is very close to the what has been generated 
meaning that maybe should be uh, around near the value of 480. Okay, so uh, the second part of A of this uh, question, which is we want to find the line losses, uh, transmission lines losses. So to calculate the transmission line losses, we just use this uh, equation, P loss equals to I square R, which is I square refers to line current. Okay, R is the uh, resistor resistor of the transmission lines so basically power loss is in terms of uh, uh, resistive loss so power loss is in terms of resistive loss which is because uh, this transmission lines is made of copper so there are some resistance uh, in inside the copper for the inductive here the inductive uh, impedance here it represents uh, the inductor, you know, inductor loss in terms of inductor. Because uh, if we have the transmission lines, some some transmission line is uh, it's not this is not one one transmission line, but it's some uh, maybe six uh, transmission lines, six lines in a group. Okay, if they put uh, that transmission line close to each other, meaning that there will be some uh, uh, electromagnetic interference uh, in terms of uh, inductive and capacitive element. So, in a more complex representation of the, of the transmission lines, basically, it will have uh, the effect in terms of uh, distributed uh, capacitor as well. But in this case, we just uh, neglect the effects of the capacitor, but we uh, in normal representation in ideal uh, transmission line we assume that it will only have uh, a resistor and also inductor so in this case p loss is 1484 watt that is for the p loss right so next is the uh, system next is the system that refers to figure b Okay, that refers to figure B, which is we have the system with uh, transmission lines, which is, for example, uh, in this figure, as you can see, clearly we have T1, which is the step-up transformer. So we have transformer, step-up transformer at the generation side, and then uh, transmission lines, and then transformer at the receiving end, or the load transformer, or step down transformer at the load side so we have t1 and t2 which is the turns ratio is 1 to 10 for t1 and then 10 to 1 for t2 so this is clearly shows that this is step up uh, transformer and then the t2 is step down transformer okay in this case so very similar case to the question the previous question that is we want to find the v load okay the load voltage so voltage across z load okay so so this question is actually quite quite uh, something like a problem solving question which is i think uh, in terms of level could be up to level 5 of uh, cognitive so we have to go it one by one carefully carefully see this uh, example okay i think you should also follow this uh, if you don't understand you can follow the uh, the video that will be upload later with by referring also to this uh, lecture uh, tutorial notes right so so in this case i just explain here okay First thing first, we want to find the V load, right? And then to analyze this system, we do the circuit analysis here. We need to convert it to common voltage level. Okay. So meaning that we want what we want to do is to eliminate. Okay, because uh, as you can see, the circuit with transformer here uh, should be converted into the circuit without transformer. So in this case, we have two steps to eliminate 
uh, each of the transformer. We start with, uh, firstly, we eliminate transformer 2 uh, by referring the load over to the transmission line voltage level. Okay, so that sort of things. All right. And then second step is we want to eliminate T1 by referring the trans transmission lines element and the equivalent load at the trans transmission line voltage over to source side. So once we finish uh, eliminate T2 and then calculate all of the impedances, then what we do is to eliminate T1 plug. Right? So we eliminate T2 first and then followed by T1. So basically, in a in a general view, what I can write here is what we want to do for this circuit is to convert it. For for example, uh, I have uh, let me just uh, redraw this. So we have transmission lines, okay, and then the transformer. Right, the transformer and impedance at load, which is Z load, 4 plus J3. Okay, so this transmission line is 0 0.18, J0.24. This is the this is the 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 original one, right? The original one. Now, we want to eliminate this T, T2. So, we want to eliminate T2 to make this into to make this into Z prime load. So, remember, how do we convert this using this equation, right? Z prime load, Z prime L equals to A square Z L, right? We can use that. So we can use that using using Z prime load equals to A square Z load. Right? So once we do that, it is this uh, uh, system has already converted into a new system without transformer T1. Sorry, without transformer T2. Okay, so we have a new system here without transformer T2. So I just redraw it like that. So this is Z line, which is Z line is still the same value, 0 0.18 plus J0.24 but this one is now becomes Z prime load right so this part becomes Z prime load okay and then what we do in the next step is to convert again to to convert again this 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 equivalent circuit into another equivalent circuit which is like this eh? we have Z line uh, sorry into this Z EQ equivalence impedance which is Z EQ is basically when we refer back to our previous equivalent circuit Z EQ is actually Z prime load plus Z line okay which is this one is Z prime load plus uh, Z line so this is another equivalent circuit okay so that's sort of things, huh? So let me just go back to this explanation, All right? So this is the procedures that we will take 
to to do the calculation of this uh, transmission line with the transformer we do step by step eliminating one by one the transformer to make sure that our circuit becomes a uh, equivalent circuit without transformer okay so this is the method for step one okay so we eliminate the t2 here and then we assume that this part this part becomes z prime load and then z line is still there so and then we use this equation z prime load is equals to a square z load right then we have already know the ratio of the turns which is 10 to 1 ratio of the t2 okay 10 to 1 then uh, z load is 4 plus j3 then we just uh, further uh, calculate this until we we get 400 plus j300 okay and then for z eq which is z eq is uh, z load plus z line so z eq is 400 point uh, using uh, z line we have z line uh, 0 0.1 uh, okay this is the resist, resist resistive side and this is the so let me i think there is no j here so this is so basically z eq is z line plus z load just this one plus this one right so meaning that we are referring to something like this. Let me just draw it. So we want to eliminate this part into equivalent impedance, which is this is Z EQ. Okay. So we get the Z EQ values here. Then the next step is uh, if the answer would like us to provide in uh, polar form, we just can just uh, uh, convert it to polar form. The thing is that uh, we have already uh, convert the previous impedances in terms of Z load into Z prime load and then Z EQ, Z equivalent. Then we can redraw the uh, circuit which is we have already here we have already eliminated t2 okay so we have already eliminated eliminated t2 before we begin step 2 which is eliminating the t1 okay this is this is the expression of uh, the final uh, impedances which is uh, z eq lah right so here the next step is to eliminate t t1 right we want to eliminate t1 which is z eq this z eq actually reflect to the source voltage this is the source voltage so again we do the same thing which is if we want to eliminate the transformer we do the same thing now we have z eq so at the uh, generator side it becomes z eq prime okay so using the same equation here we can uh, just uh, substitute all of the values that we have already calculated in the previous uh, we have already calculated some of the values before for example z eq here we have already had a uh, equivalent circuit of the impedance then we do the calculation again and then convert it into the polar form okay we convert it into polar form okay so after that once we have the z eq prime and z eq so the final circuit should be like this so this is the final circuit as you can see that there, there is no more transformer there is no more transformer for this circuit so because we have already eliminated all of the transforms starting from t2 and then followed by t1 right so we have eliminated all of the transformers now we have z eq prime here okay 
which is z eq prime also we have already calculated this is z eq prime z eq prime right then okay so basically we have this uh, z eq prime then we can uh, actually we can just uh, this from this one from this uh, equivalent circuit we can represent it in terms of uh, transmission lines and also loads basically we can separate this z eq one uh, z eq prime equation into a more understandable system which is we have uh, load part and then transmission line parts and then generator so in this circuit this circuit as you can see no more T1 and T2. No more transformers. Meaning that we have already converted uh, the circuit with transformer into the equivalent circuit without transformer. Okay. So we have, uh, we rearrange this uh, ZEQ prime uh, equation into, uh, we, re we rename in, into new uh, impedance which is Z load double prime plus Z line prime. All right. Okay. So, as you can see, the load impedance he here is the same as the load impedance for the load impedance as in the as in the question. Huh? Okay, four plus J J three, right? So, and then next. Okay. So once we have a uh, once we got all of the values of uh, impedances, now once we got uh, the values of the impedances, uh, now we want to find the IG, which is generator current, okay? So simply by using IG equals to uh, this one, eh? mm, so we have Z EQ prime here. So we have Z EQ prime, Z. EQ prime and then the generator. So we want to find the IG. This current that that flows from the generator to the uh, impedance, which is Z EQ prime. So simply we use this expression, which is uh, IG equals to generator voltage divided by uh, impedance. Okay, which is this one is actually Z EQ prime, right? So we get uh, the generator current, which is 95.94 angle negative 36. So here, we already know the value of uh, current at the generator. We can do the, we can use uh, number of turns, huh? turns ratio. We can use the turns, is, turns ratio, which is NP1 represent, NP1 represents the turns ratio at the primary side. Turns at the primary side, and then NS1 is turns at the turns at the secondary side. Okay. So, using uh, turns ratio with respect to current, using this equation, we can uh, find the uh, transmission lines current. Okay. 
we get a uh, transmission lines current which is 9.594 as you can see this transmission lines current is much more lower than the uh, generator current why because when when we step up the voltage when we step up the voltage okay uh, just let uh, when we step up the voltage meaning that at the same time current will be drop because we want to maintain the power power which is power is the same from primary to secondary okay power is the same so that is why as you can see uh, voltage sorry current for the from the generator which is 95 now uh, when it passed through transmission uh, when it passed through the transformer one the current is now 9.5 only which is uh, 1 over 10 ratio right so because we, we have already stuck uh, we have already uh, step up the voltage 10 times of the original voltage at the same time current drop about 10 times of the original current All right so again at transmission lines uh, sorry at transformer number two we can use the same e equation of uh, turns ratio with respect to the current to get the I load okay so we rearrange this equation until we get uh, the load current so the load current is now 95.9 okay 95.9 which is the load current which is as you can see it is the same as IG so load current I load is the same as IG as you can see IG is 95.94 similarly the load current is also uh, 95.94 why because at this stage uh, current is now uh, increased because voltage is in uh, current is now the increase because voltage is now decreased meaning that we have a step down the voltage at the same time current will be increased All right so at this uh, at this load side okay uh, let me just repeat it from here we have voltage we step up the voltage uh, 10 times okay so similarly current will be decreased 10 times and pass through these transmission lines okay so the same amount of power is transmit through this transmission line then after it arrive to t2 transformer number two again uh, the voltage will be step down so voltage step down happen here about 10 times from the original value of the voltage so it goes back to around 40 480 volt okay then at the same time current also will be increased at the load side because voltage has already been stepped down so so we have calculated the i load which is similar to IG. Now it is possible for us to go back to the question just now. The question wants us to, to find the load voltage. The question wants us to find the load voltage, which is V load. So we can just use I load times Z load to find the voltage. Where do I get the Z load? Z load is coming from uh, the original value of Z load which is 4 plus j3 right so from 4 plus j3 we can do the uh, rectangular into polar form uh, we can transform it from rectangular form into polar form so we have uh, this value of uh, impedance at load 5 angle 36 which is this is the z load times the i load so by using that uh, calculation we will get the V load which is 479 so here very clear that this uh, V load is almost 
the same, very close to the value of generator voltage. See? So, uh, at the generator side, we have uh, V, which is 480, right? Angle 0 degree, okay? 480 angle 0 degree here. At V load, we have uh, after step up and step down of the voltage, we receive almost the same voltage of the generator, which is 479.7 uh, angle negative 0 0.001 degree. Okay. So, similarly, we can uh, calculate the transmission line losses using this equation. P loss equals to I line square R line. Then, we only get the loss of the uh, power during transmission is only 16.7 Watt. So, this is the system with the transformer. As you can see in the previous discussion, for the system without transformer, for the system without transformer, the transmission loss was more than 1000, all right? So more than 1000 transmission loss because we don't use transformer in this case. So if you use the transformer, we can uh, minimize the transmission loss, okay? Up to only uh, 16 watt, right? So it's proven that here uh, in uh, in this figure, as you we, we have a look back at this figure. So when we have the generation, then uh, we want to transfer the power from that generation over long distance to load center, meaning that for example, uh, in around Kuala Terengganu or Kuala Nerus, this is load load area. A lot of residential, a lot of uh, customer, domestic customer, factories, okay, commercial buildings. So a lot of loads here. So we want to transfer the energy over long distance. So the transformer play the main role here, which is transformer is used to step up the voltage and then step down the voltage to make sure that uh, in terms of loss uh, during the transmission of power can be minimized. Okay, so that sort of thing, the explanation about uh, example 2.1. Okay, so if you don't understand, just let me know. Uh, basically, you will have to look back. If you don't understand about this explanation and then uh, uh, my, I have also shared with you guys the uh, tutorial notes here. So if you don't understand, just refer back to the tutorial notes and also refer to this video that I will upload later so that you can understand how you can use all of the uh, equations related to transformer based on the turns ratio. Okay, We can convert all of the impedance here into the equivalent impedance and then convert the system with transformer into the system without transformer before we can do the further calculations. So in this transformer uh, topic, in this topic related to the transformer, we will, uh, we will see, we will, uh, we will, uh, we will find a lot of uh, questions related to uh, conversion of the impedance uh, into equivalent impedance, right? Just to eliminate the transformer. Similarly, we have the uh, some other tutorial questions here. Okay, this is another example that we, we, we are going to study, which is about exact equivalent circuit of the real transformer and on how we can co uh, convert all of these values into uh, the simplest uh, representation of the equivalent circuit here. Then do the calculation of the uh, electrical values of the transformer. Right? Uh, like this one also, we will do the cal cal 
calculation very similar to the uh, the one that we are discussing today which is uh, we want to eliminate uh, these two transformer from region 1 region 2 and region 3 region 3 we have transmission lines and then transformer okay so i think uh, we have arrived to 253 so anything uh, anything you like to ask you can ask now for example about the quiz question or oh, is it clear about the explanation of the quiz okay let me just stop this uh, my recording